Welcome to our Ash Wednesday service. No matter where you are or what you're doing, you are welcome here today. So today is Ash Wednesday, which is the beginning of the church season of Lent, which the color of which is purple. As you can see, our banners and pyramids have changed color. And Lent is the church season that will take us all the way up to Easter. Uh, so today, instead of our usual just reading and a sermon, our service of the word centers on the three traditional pillars of the Lenten season, almsgiving, fasting, and prayer. So we'll hear a Bible story about each of these, followed by a short reflection and a song. Um, so just to mix it up a little bit. Uh, and if you have picked up ash from church, um, you can have it handy. Otherwise, you can grab just a little bowl of water or absolutely nothing um, as we remember our baptism in the with the imposition of ashes. Let us take a moment of silent reflection before we begin with our service today. Grace, God, according to your steadfast love, with your great mercy wipe away my sins, thoroughly wash my transgressions away, and cleanse me from my offense. Look, you desire truth in what is hidden, in what is concealed make wisdom known to me. Purify me with a hyssop, that I may be clean. Wash me, that I may be whiter than snow. A pure heart create for me, God and an upright spirit renew within me. Amen. People of God, in the baptismal waters you traveled with Christ from death to life. Your past, your sin, your failure, your doubt are drowned and gone here. Your fear, your confusion, your self-righteousness, your despair, 
are washed away by grace. Your pride, your hypocrisy, and other people's opinions of you no longer define you. The Spirit lives and moves through you now, a great and joyful mystery, so you may bring love and mercy into the world as the body of Christ. Rejoice that God has claimed you in this baptismal grace, not by your own doing or believing, but by God's mercy alone. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing that you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who ask. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that, truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from 1 Kings chapter 17. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, And bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said, but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry, in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Here ends the reading. Almsgiving is an old-fashioned word that means giving to someone in need. Lent is a season of reflection and repentance, a chance to stop and take a breath and focus on how we are a part of God's work in the world, part of making everything that is dead and broken new again, of breathing new life into what seems to be dust. That's what God sent Elijah to do in, for the widow in this story. She has almost nothing left and seems to be full of despair. There's no more food, there's a drought, and she has run out of hope. But then up pops Elijah, this foreigner who wants her hospitality and promises that there will be more than enough. I think most of us, if we were in her position, we wouldn't have believed this stranger from a strange land, but she does. And as a result, there is more than enough. That's what God does with our own gifts as well. They may seem small or insignificant, but God has shown us time and time again what God can do with the smallest amount. Jesus tells us that the faith as small as a mustard seed can move mountains. Two fish and five loaves of bread become enough to feed 5,000 families. And the last drops of oil and a small pile of flour become enough to feed the widow, her son, and Elijah for nearly three years. In this season, God invites us to think about everything we have and those who do not have their daily bread, refugees and poor, 
the homeless and the forgotten. Almsgiving helps us to see those that the world wishes to make invisible, the people that God always sees and cares for. His name is blessed, name shall be called wonderful. His name is precious, name shall be called counselor. A reading from Isaiah, the 58th chapter. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves, and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen, only a day for people to humble themselves? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying in sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke. Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and he will say, Here am I. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing of finger, and malicious talk. Here ends the reading. For those of us who grew up in the Catholic Church, we know all about fasting and Lent, giving up something you enjoy, no meat today or on Fridays, and... But for those of us who have struggled with eating disorders, the Church telling us not to eat certain things can be extremely unhelpful. But fasting doesn't need to be about deprivation. In its original form, fasting was about clearing away the clutter to be able to focus on God, which is a little different than giving up chocolate for 40 days to help jumpstart some weight loss. <laughs> the prophet Isaiah paints a very different picture of what fasting is and is supposed to be. It is to loose the bonds of injustice, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke. Isaiah is talking to people who have forgotten what it means to follow God. In Isaiah's time, 
as long as you did the right thing and the right place at the right time, God was bound to forgive you and you could then just go right back to what you were doing. And God and Isaiah are sick of that. Because God doesn't just care what we do, but God cares about why we do it. Empty rituals are empty, and God knows that. And God wants more than just us going through the motions because we've always done it that way. What might it mean for us to take God's invitation during this season of Lent and to choose to fast from something that hurts or harms another, even if it's someone we may never meet? Great is my faith. Psalm 25, 1 through 10. In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful toward those who keep the demands of his covenant. It's so easy for prayer to be something that we have in our back pocket for emergencies. Of course, we pray together during church service, reciting the well-known words, sometimes a little too quickly, sometimes lagging behind everyone else a bit, oftentimes with our minds somewhere else. And we know the feeling of a heartfelt, desperate prayer in a time of trial when we are begging God with everything we have for it to be all right on our way to the hospital, in the dark night of the soul, when we're terrified that we're out of options. God hears those prayers, every single one of them, including the ones we only mean about 25%. But prayer doesn't have to be a Sunday or special emergency kind of thing. Prayer is simply talking to God about anything and everything. The book of Psalms are prayers that, the, that in ancient times were sent to music. Prayers of praise and thanksgiving. Prayers of despair. Prayers for help from enemies. Prayers asking God to help us on the highest of mountains, in the lowest of valleys, and in the mundane every day. Lent invites us to remember prayer. To remember that we have the ear of the Almighty God the Creator, whenever we wish for it. Prayer in the season of Lent is an invitation to talk anytime and anywhere to engage God in a conversation. 
because each of us are beautifully and wonderfully made. And God delights in listening and speaking with us. Before time, God had a dream dust. Something to be more than it seemed dust. Infinite energies shaped and combined. Atoms and molecules all intertwined at the heart of a star. And there you are, dust Cupped in the palm of God's hand Loved from before you were born Filled with the breath of the Holy One And formed to bear and to share the good news That if not for God's love, you wouldn't be, but you are what you are. Dust. Blown on a breeze, easily swept dust. Promises made were promises kept to dust. Endless descendants God gave Abraham that could no more be counted than the dust of the land or the sand of the sea. It's good to be dust, cupped in the palm of God's hand. Loved from before you were born Filled with the breath of the Holy One And formed to bear and to share the good news The news that if not for God's love You wouldn't be but you are What you are Sweet child of Bethlehem, healer of Galilee, killed in Jerusalem, risen again to be God who once was and is with us. Dust. Loved from before you, Filled with the breath of the Holy One And formed to bear and to share the good news The news that if not for God's love You wouldn't be, but you are what you are Dust Today we remember that we were formed from the dust of the earth and from stardust, that God created us and everything that exists and that God made us good. We hold onto that certainty in one hand while with the other we acknowledge all the ways we have failed to love God, to love one another, and to love ourselves. We know that we are both saint and sinner at the same time. Today we mark ourselves with the cross on our forehead to remember that Christ, through death and resurrection, has redeemed us and all of creation. Some of you have picked up ashes from church, but if you don't have those, you can use water for this part or even just your finger. 
We mark the cross on our foreheads and the foreheads of those of us, of those in our families, just as we were marked when we were baptized, to remind ourselves that life is short and that God's mercy endures forever. So you can mark the cross on your forehead and hear this truth. Remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. And now, gather together in the Holy Spirit as one. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You are what God has made you to be. Created in Jesus Christ for good works. Chosen as holy and beloved. Freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. My soul proclaims your greatness, Lord, I sing. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God. <laughs>